All right. Uh, looks like we're going to be doing Algebra 2 OAS 82821. The student will factor by grouping, and this is lecture 9, or 11 9 and 11 10. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to factor by grouping if we're asked to factor four terms that won't combine. So if, I, if the instructions say factor, or factor completely, or anything along those lines, and you're given four terms and you can't combine them because they're not like terms, then we're going to try factoring by grouping. And I'll show you how it's going to go uh, as far as our uh, worksheet is concerned. Factor the following. I'll look at these terms and say, hey, I've got four terms. We haven't factored any four terms uh, other than just pulling out the greatest common factor. And these don't have a greatest common factor. I can't combine them because to combine like terms, we have to have all of them have to have the same variable and the exact same exponent in order for us to be able to combine them. And since we don't have that, we can't combine like terms, we can't factor a greatest common factor out, so we're going to try to factor by grouping. And I've set these up to, to uh, introduce the concept to you. I've set it up so that uh, we'll just group the, like this to start factoring by grouping. We will group the first two. I think I'll do that in red. We'll group the first two terms together, group the second two terms together, and then we'll factor what each of these two terms has in common out, and what each of these two terms has in common out, as we've done when we we're factoring out greatest common factors. In other words, I look at this and say, hey, both of these have a common factor of 5. And they also both have a highest power of x that they both share is x squared. They both have an x squared. There's x squared, and there's x squared times another x. So they both have a 5 and an x squared. So I'm going to write that down, open up a parenthesis, and then term by term, write what's left if I divide each of those terms by 5x squared, the greatest common factor. If I divide this by 5, I get 5. If I divide this by x squared, I get x. Plus, if I divide this by 5, I get 7. And if I divide this by x squared, I get 1. And 1 times 7 is 7. So I factored a 5x squared out of both of these terms, which left me with 5x squared times the quantity 5x plus 7. And to check to see if I've done it correctly, you can just use the distributive property and see if you get this. 5x squared times 5x is 25x cubed. 5x squared times 7 is 35x squared. Okay, now I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to pull the greatest common factor out of this one. Well, uh, it looks like they both will divide by 8. I think that's the biggest number I see that's in both of them, the biggest factor. So I'm going to try to divide both terms by 8 and factor out an 8. So let's say plus 8 times the quantity. If I pull an 8 out of this, I'm left with 5x. Plus, if I pull an 8 out of this, I'm left with 7. Okay. So we've got it started, but it's not really factored because in order for something to be factored, everything has got to be multiplied together when we're done. And there's still a plus sign here. So what we're going to do is look at this and see, well, what if these two terms, this is now a great big term, two things multiplied together plus a couple things multiplied together. Can I factor anything out of these two terms? Well, look at it like this. What if I had this? This is just me thinking. We're not actually uh, dealing with this situation, but think of it like this. 5x squared times a plus 8 times a. If I said, well, what do both of these terms have in common? You say, well, they both have an a, and that's all they have in common. And you could pull that a out, open a set of parentheses, and say, well, if I pull the a out here, I'm left with 5x squared. Plus, if I pull the a out of this one, we're dividing each term by a when we pull it out, when we're factoring. Plus, and I pull this a out here, that leaves me with 8. I, I think that would make sense if we've done we factored out greatest common factors before. Well, look at this. Think of this 5x plus 7 and this 5x plus 7 as just big A's. 
because it's the set 5x squared times a plus 8 times a, and we would pull that a out and write what's left. We're going to do the exact same thing with that 5x plus 7. We're going to treat this like a big A and this like a big A. They're both the same term, so I'm going to factor it out and see what happens. I'm going to pull this out of each of those. So they both have the quantity 5x plus 7. So I pull that out, open a parenthesis, and write what's left term by term. If I pull this out of this one, I'm left with 5x squared. Plus, if I pull this out, I'm left with 8. And now I've got a chunk, which we call a factor, times another factor. There are no plus or minus signs in between the parentheses, and so I've got it factored. And oftentimes, uh, if you're dealing in a multiple choice situation, they'll, they may write it like this. It doesn't matter which order these factors come in. It's just two things that are multiplied together. For instance, if this was 3 times 2, you could write it as 2 times 3. They both have the same value. And so either one of these would be an acceptable answer. This or this. Okay? That's the technique we're going to use. I'll do, I'll do a couple more and hopefully it'll make sense. Uh, again, we just started by fact, grouping the first two together and grouping the second two together with parentheses when we saw that we had four terms then factoring out the greatest common factor of each of the sets of parentheses and that will leave us a term that we can factor out. Let's try it here. Uh, I can't combine these terms. There are no common factors in all four of them. So I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to group these two together and say, okay, well what do those have in common? They both have a five Definitely. So I'm going to say 5. And they both have an n squared. That's the highest power of n that they both have. This has n squared. This has n squared times n. So I can pull a 5 n squared out of both of those by dividing. If I divide this by 5, I get 4. If I divide this by n squared, I get n. And then I can do a quick check. 5 n squared times 4 n is 20 n cubed. Minus. If I pull a 5 out of this, I get 7. If I pull n squared out of this, I get 1, and 1 times 7 is 7. Plus, both of these have a 4, as far as I can see. Yep, that's it. So I'm going to pull a 4 out of both of these. Remember, when we pull it out, we're dividing each of these terms by 4. So that can be 4n minus 7. And now we're in the exact same boat we were in up, up above when I said, think of this as a big A. And this is, these are the same thing, so I can factor those out, leaving 5n plus 4. Okay, so I'm going to factor this bit out of both of these. I'm going to pull this out and then open a set of parentheses. This is what they both have in common. 4n minus 7, open a parenthesis, and then write what's left. If I pull 4n minus 7 out of this, I'm left with 5n squared. Plus, if I pull 4n minus 7 out of that, I'm left with 4. And now I've got it factored. I've got this chunk times this chunk. These chunks are called factors. And they're being multiplied together, which is what makes them factors. So we've taken four terms and factor them by grouping. Okay? Four terms. We group the first two, group the second. Now when we get into a little further down the road, these won't be all set up nice and neat where you just group the first two and group the second two. You'll have to move them around, but that'll be down the road. For today, all you have to do is group the first two and group the second two. Okay. Let's do one more and uh, then we'll be done with this. Uh, I'm, I notice that I can't factor anything out of every single term. I've got four terms. They won't combine. So I'm going to do factoring by grouping. 
I'm going to group these two, and I'm going to group these two. Then I'm going to factor the GCF, the greatest common factor, out of these two, which is 4p squared. That's what they both have. So I'm going to write that down, 4p squared. And I'm going to divide each term by the biggest factor that they both have. So I'm going to divide this by 4p squared, which will give me 6p minus, and if I pull 4p squared out of itself, I'm left with 1 because I'm dividing. When I pull something out, I'm dividing each term by the term that I'm pulling out. So 4p squared divided by 4p squared is 1. And then to check to see if I've got it factored correctly, I can use the distributive property. 4p squared times 6p is 24p cubed. 4p squared times negative 1 is negative 4p squared. So I'm off to a good start there. I haven't messed up yet. Now I see that these both have a 5, so I'll pull a 5 out of both of them and see what I get. This will give me 6p minus, and remember, when you pull a 5 out of itself, you're dividing, whatever you pull out, you're dividing term by term the factor that you're pulling out. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. Okay, And now we've got this thing factored where we factored the groups, and now each of these has a common factor, this big chunk that I can pull out. They both have a 6p minus 1 as a factor, so I pull the 6p minus 1 out, open a set of parentheses, and then term by term write what's left if I pulled 6p minus 1 out. Well, in this case it would be 4p squared plus, and in this case, if I pull the 6p minus 1 out, I'm left with that 5. And again, <clears throat> I didn't say it up above uh, on this one, but it doesn't matter what order these are written in. If you look among your choices, your answer choices, it may be written like this, the factorization. Doesn't matter what order we write our factors in, because multiplication is commutative. That means you can multiply things in any order you want. So. Those are two responses that you might find in a multiple choice situation. Again, doesn't matter which of these comes first. That is factoring by grouping. So for our purposes, we'll factor by grouping when we have four terms, one, two, three, four, that won't combine. So we just group the first two and group the second two, and then pull the greatest common factor out of each of those groups. And that will leave a factor that they both share now. This has a 5x plus 7, and so does this. So we pull it out and write what's left term by term, 5x squared plus 8, if we pull that out. And that happens every single time. We pull the 4n minus 7 out after we grouped, we factored out the greatest common factor in each group, and that left a factor that would come out. Grouped, factored each group, greatest common factor, pulled it out, and said, hey, both of these have 6p minus 1, so we wrote it down and wrote what's left, 4p, that should be 4p squared. Didn't do much yet, did I? 4p squared times 6p is 6p cubed. Uh, and it doesn't matter which one of these, uh, which way you write those. So we pulled the 6p minus 1 out, and we're left with 4p squared plus 5. And that's what we're doing today. Hopefully that made sense. You can do this. <laughs>